Good morning, beloveds. We are still in the midst of our cold snap. Uh, so I put on many layers to go outside today. And then the minute I walked back in the house, I was too hot. <sighs> it's interesting where I live. All right. It is November 16th. Our title is I Walk in the Light. Which sounds like a Johnny Cash song. Um, God is a spirit and they that worship it must worship it in spirit and in truth. And that is John 4, 24. Uh, okay. Oh, it's from the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. The father of this universe, the mother, the supporter, the grandsire, the holy one is to be known the word of power. And that is the Bhagavad Gita. Our lesson tells us that from the oneness of God proceeds all that really is. Wonderful indeed is this con uh, conception of the union of all life, which Jesus proclaimed in the ecstasy of his illumination. I and my father are one. Uh, all cause and effect proceed from the invisible spirit. People are one with spirit and cannot be separated from it. Its word has power because its word is the action of God through its thought. Their word has power because their word is the action of God through their thought. Power is. We use it. We do not have to create it. Let us seek to use the divine nature more generously and with greater a greater idea of God's beneficence and abundance. When we learn to rightly believe, our good is increased. Receiving much, we, sh we shall receive more. Giving everything, we shall in return receive all. Let us be willing to die to the lesser in order to become resurrected to the greater. This is the m true meaning of the thought that we must lose our lives in order to find them. We must let go of ignorance if we would gain knowledge. We must stop walking in darkness if we would walk in the light. Today, I walk in the understanding of my oneness with God. There is an inspiration within me which governs every thought, every act, with certainty and in love and in peace. My guidance is multiplied and I know exactly what to do and how to do it for the benefit of all concerned in my life and affairs. And if you hadn't guessed by now, that's Ernest Holmes. <laughs> and oh my God, there's so much to unpack in that. I don't think I could, like I could spend an hour talking about this one and still not even cover um, all of it. Um, because there is so much, so much. Uh, but I, I had to stop and read that quote from the Bhagavad Gita and was like, wait, what? Um because, you know, my tendency to gender neutral, which is why I redid one of those lines, because I was like, the way I, I read it, it didn't make sense. Um, uh, but there was that line in there that uh, about we don't have to create the energy. And I think that's a super important line. And uh, my undergraduate degree is in anthropology, but I was in engineering before I got into anthropology. Ooh, warm. <laughs> Cat on hot pad. Um and that's one of those things in, in thermodynamics. One of the laws of the universe is energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is merely transformed. And so that's kind of where we are in science of mind. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It is merely transformed. The energy is, is there. The energy is always available for us to use. Um, but it is up to us to use it. And when we use it, we are transforming that energy. Um, and we are transforming it through us. And so the way we transform it through us is based on what we know and what we believe. And so that's one of those super important um, ideas that where it gets, it becomes really important to know what you really believe. Uh, which is why we spend so much time doing that inner work. Um, when we look around at our life and our life is messy and chaotic and it's like, all right, my messy and chaotic life is showing me what I actually believe. And maybe what I need to do is go in and root out those beliefs. Um, 
<clears throat> and uproot them and plant something new because we've been talking about gardens. Uh, Jesse does this beautiful uh, description of where our beliefs come from and how they spiral. It's like there are a whole lot of things that we are consciously taught that we once once we are taught them, we sink them into our subconscious and more importantly into our unconscious. And so we've got these beliefs deep down in us that are running us that we are no longer even aware of. Uh, and I, and, and, and that's one of the things that I was taught because the, um, the class that I'm, uh, in right now, it was talking about our values, but it was also talking about our implicit biases. We have been taught a number of things by very well-meaning people, which have no bearing on our life, but we are no longer aware that we still have these things that were taught to us by, you know, by our parents, by our grandparents, by our aunts and uncles, by society, culture, and religion in general, um, that do not serve us. But we were taught them so long ago, we are no longer aware of how they are running us. Um, so the, one of the, one of the websites that they suggested was an implicit bias website, which is run by Harvard. Um, and it, it's like, it's a good idea to occasionally go back and check our biases to check and to check our beliefs and to dig down into our subconscious and unconscious and go, well, why do I believe that? You know, who told me that? Um, why, why, and why, why am I letting this little fact run my life? Um, in, and, and, and once I dig that root up and look at it and go, you know what? This doesn't serve me anymore. Um, I eat the belief that there's not enough. Uh, the, that, that's, that's a big belief that a lot of people have. Um, and we use it we use it a lot because if there's not enough for everybody, then the only way I can get my good is by taking it away from you. And that is not a world that works for everybody. It's also not true. There is enough for everybody. Okay. We have let cultural biases get in our way about how that enough is distributed. Okay. So, you know, so there's, there's, that's where we have to go in and what is our unconscious belief? Um, somebody finally, it's like, I read that line from the grapes of wrath and went, Oh, you know, if a prophet can that, what it was it that oranges rot, rot in the field because a prophet cannot be made from them. You, there's enough, but we have some beliefs on how, and that's what we need to root out. So I think I got off onto, yeah. Cause I'm thinking about implicit biases. Um, and so if I'm going to walk in the light, then there are a whole lot of things that I need to let go of. Uh, and I can start by recognizing who I am, where I come from, and what everyone around me is, which is that we all come from the same source. And that's how he starts um, the, the reading. Our lesson tells us that the oneness of God precedes all that really is. Wonderful indeed is this con con conception of the union of all life, which Jesus proclaimed in ec ecstasy of his illumination. If I say I and the spirit are one, if I know this about myself, then I have to know it about absolutely everybody. Everybody is one with spirit. There is nobody who is not of spirit. There is nothing that is not of spirit. And if I start there, then there's a whole lot of unconscious biases that I can unwind and let go of to walk in the light. And that's what he's talking about today. And so I would say the mission today, should we choose to accept it, is exactly that. Our mission today is to walk in the light. Well, how do we do that? By knowing where we come from. Once we recognize where we come from, we recognize, then we have to expand that out to recognize that everyone comes from the same source. We are all one. We are all one. That's the mission. And, you know, rooting out our unconscious biases, rooting out our unconscious beliefs, rooting out that one thing that somebody told you a long time ago that isn't true, that's been running your life, that you haven't been aware of. 
that's the work to be done. And maybe it was more than one thing, but you know, generally there's that one thing. <laughs> that one thing that we're not even aware of that we were told in our childhood that's so by somebody that loves us and we have let it run our lives. It's time to stop. Uh, and for a lot of us, I can tell you that it's a worthiness issue. It's like, if you do this, you'll be worthy. No, no, there's nothing you have to do to be worthy. You are worthy now because you are a beloved child of God. You are a divine spark of spirit. You are worthy now. All right, beloveds, that is the mission. The other one is the spiritual practice of doing something loving for yourself, doing something kind for yourself, doing something compassionate for yourself. It can be one thing. It can be three things. It can be everything. But the point is to practice on yourself. One, you deserve your own love. You deserve your own kindness. You deserve your own compassion. Two, you are the best test subject for loving, kind, and compassion. Three, you create a bank of loving, kind, and compassion. You create a habit, a default setting, a first response. So that when you meet people who need a little extra, because they have forgotten who they are, you have it. When you do this kind of work, loving, kind, compassionate work on yourself, you become aware of who you are. You also become aware of who everyone else is. You recognize the oneness. All right. So practice on yourself. Um, it is a good idea to have multiple spiritual practices. And I'm a big believer in practicing loving, kind, compassion on yourself. Um, it is about self-care. Absolutely, it is about self-care, but it's also about joy. No matter what is going on in the world, you deserve joy. All right? So make time for it. Sometimes joy takes an effort. And when we put a little effort in, the payout can be pretty amazing. So practice on yourself. And it can look like taking a walk, taking a nap, taking a deep breath, Engaging all five senses in a cup of coffee or tea or hot chocolate. It's cold, hot chocolate. Um, it can look like eating dessert first. It can look like meeting a good friend. It can look like taking yourself out to the movie, you know. But it is about both self-care and joy. All right. Um, I'm going to move into the process of my day. So I'm going to, here's the rest of the encouragement to do something to engage your mind and your body, whatever that looks like to drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important. Um, and I say drink plenty of water. What form it comes in, that's up to you, but hydrate, um, and get some early in your day, bright light, uh, that will reset your hormones. It will reset your circadian rhythm. You will have more energy during the day. You will sleep better at night. It is super important. Science. You can look it up. Okay. Um, and then the last thing is to take Ernest, Ernest Holmes words, open the windows of your soul, allow the breath of heaven to remind you, you do live in heaven right here, right now. It is all around us all the time because it's a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness. That work that I was talking about, walking in the light by rooting down into our unconscious and subconscious and looking for those things that no longer, no longer serve us and knowing who we are and knowing the source of us. That is what that breath of heaven is. It's a state of mind. It's a state of consciousness. It is a superpower that means once we get our mind right, once we walk in the light, we have the power to create heaven wherever we are. All right. That, that is a gift. That is a true gift. And it is a gift that each and every one of us have been given, just like the Christ consciousness. Each and every one of us have been given that. And to activate that, the password is love. And I'm passionate about that. I'm always passionate about that. So, um, and whatever, whatever next is apparently was not necessary because I don't remember it. All right. Practice, practice, practice on yourself. Oh, breath of heaven. And as always, when we're talking about opening the windows of our soul, an easy way to do that is to take Emma's advice. Look for the good and praise it. 
All right, beloveds. Um, here's where I will do the um, social media part. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center. We are Creative Life Spark. I, I am the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. I encourage you to uh, email info at creativelife.org to get on the constant contact. That will um, let you know what's going on at the center, when even when we don't know. Uh, the biggest thing that I know that's coming up is the food market, I believe, is this Saturday. Because we do it the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And uh, Thanksgiving's next Thursday. It's a week from tomorrow. So, uh, and we can always use all the volunteers. And Thanksgiving's a really good one uh, to, to do the food market. with. It's with the Montgomery Food Bank. All right. Um... So that is what I know. The hot links are hot in the email. So check that out. Um, and here's where I get to encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanting day, an enchanted day, a magical day, a wondrous day, a wonder filled day, an awesome day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day because you are enough just as you are. As I have said, you are a beloved child of God. You are a divine spark. You are God in motion. You are spirit in action. This is who you are. It's who you are. So walk in the light. Walk in the light and know. All right. Oh, okay. Um, Reverend David should be on around 5 p.m. with you. I will be back with you at 9 a.m. Um, take care of yourself. Know that you are loved and I will see you next time.